agent reasoning is one of the most important things when we're talking about AI agents, but also just large language models in general. This is how the AI agents, large language models, they understand the world, understand the user's intent and so on, when it's going to solve a task. So reasoning agent, it basically just gives the agents ability to think before it does respond. Usually with the large language models, they basically just take the input and then they generate a response based on that. But you can put the agents in thinking mode so it acts like does reasoning step, chain of thought, just as a human would do. So you break down the problems in multiple chunks and then you act like just think about it and also analyze the results of the actions that the agents are taking. So agent reasoning is one of the most important things in building AI agent systems. It approves the agent's ability to solve problems that require sequential tool calling or basically just very complex problems that it can break down. But it's very important if an agent has access to multiple tools and so on as well, it can act like go in and reason about which of the tools should I use, what should be the input to that tool, and how do I analyze the results that I get back from the tools. Also, if we have multiple agents work together in a team. So going through an internal chain of thought, so basically just a chain of thoughts where it's thinking about each step that it's doing, working through different ideas, validating and also correcting as needed. So we can both have reasoning models, we can have reasoning agents and so on. It can be at different levels. So there's some of the large language models which are trained on reinforcement learning. It is basically just giving it human feedback, teaching the models how to respond, how to think and solve problems. So some of the models are trained for that. That is, for example, the O series from OpenAI, the Claude 3.7 Sonnet in thinking mode, and also the Gemini models in thinking mode as well. So this is the difference between just the standard call and the thinking mode. There we have the reasoning on the model level, but not all models that have this chain of thought or thinking mode. So we can actually go in and do it on an agent level as well. So it divides it into multiple steps and then we still just have the traditional LLM call. So reasoning at the model layer is about what the model does before it starts generating a response. This is basically just thinking just as a human would do. We think, we solve the task and then we get a response. Very good at single shot use cases and also solving hard problems, coding, math, physics, complex problems, breaking them down to first principle thinkings, does not take into account multiple turns, sequential tool calling and all this. We need to build that around on the agent level and not on the model level. So that takes us to the reasoning tools and agents, which is like one step deeper down. So giving a model a think tool can improve its reasoning capabilities by providing a dedicated space for structured thinking. And here we also makes it possible for the agents to do thinking mode. Even if the models are not trained on reinforcement learning, we can still give it a tool where it tries to break down the task into multiple chunks and think about the task that it's going to do. So this is a good way to add thinking to a non-reasoning model out of the box. Reasoning agents, they're a type of multi-agent system that combines chain of thought reasoning with tool use. So you can go in and use tools as well. It can break down, I need to use these tools to solve this problem. It's basically just giving access to a tool set. We covered that in another video. It's very important. Reasoning, tool use, this is pretty much what makes these AI agents agents and not just traditional large language models. Then we can build memory, multi-user permissions, all of that around it as well. But that's a bit more for the software system. So when an AI agent is giving a task, a separate reasoning agent first solves the problem using chain of thought and then at each step it calls tools to gather information it validates the results you know we analyze what each engine is generating this is kind of like the chain of thought thinking mode and also analysis mode then it goes to iterate until it reaches a final answer runs the once the reason agenting agent has a final answer it hands the results back to the original agent to validate and provide a response so this is how we can build some sequential thinking, basically just breaking it down into more, having multiple agents working on the same task, thinking about how it's solving it, and then it goes hand in hand with another model to come up with the best results. So this is if you don't have a reasoning model out of the box that you can use, want to use a smaller model or so on, could also be pricing and all that. So this is very important when we build highly accurate agent systems for critical use cases. It can think by itself and not just a single LM call we send out there where we basically just get the tokens generated out, just get the response directly without any thinking or analysis. So it's not just jump straight into my code editor. We're going to see an example with reasoning from Agno. 
So this is very easy. This is the framework that I've used in the other videos as well. We just need to import OpenAI Chan and the agent. Then we can set up our API key. First of all here, let's just run a very basic example through and it's coming out the other ones. So now we just have an O3 mini model. So this is a thinking or reasoning model from OpenAI directly. So solve the trolley problem, evaluate multiple ed ethical uh, frameworks, include an ASCII diagram of your solution. So now we can basically just run this Python program here. This is going to do the agent reasoning, sequential thinking and all that directly from OpenAI side because this model is already trained on reinforcement learning. So this model takes longer, it's more expensive to run and so on compared to like if you build it out on your own level. The second example here, while it's solving a problem, we can see how long it takes. It's streaming the results out. So you can see here it took around um, 15 seconds or something, 13 seconds. We get the result out and streaming it out because we said streaming equal to true as well. Then we can see here it comes back with the summary. And the most important is pretty much just the, uh, the diagram. So we ask it to come up with this ASCII diagram of the trolley dilemma. And it's basically just, um, let's see here, the dilemma. So I'll just go in here and search for the trolley problem so you guys can understand what it is and easier to, to understand. But it's basically just this idea here, which one, how should we turn the train? Should we kill this guy or should we kill this group of people here instead? So this is pretty much just the trolley problem that is trying to solve, figuring out what is the best ethical way to go in and solve this problem where it comes up with a solution. So it takes some different viewpoints and then we can see there's no universal accepted solution because the ethical systems value distinct aspects of the moral landscapes, uh, the outcomes, the intrinsic nature of the act or the character behind this decision. The choice often comes down to which ethical values one believes in are paramount. So here we can see a flow chart or basically just like a, a diagram over the different <laughs> over the different situations. So here we have five lives diverges and we have one live here and then here we have the lever where we can switch the position. So this is actually just breaking down the problem, seeing it from different viewpoints and so on, tries to come up with a solution, but here you can't really come up with one because it depends on the viewpoint and pretty much what you what your ethical configurations are. So let's try to see now we don't have an, an reasoning agent because we want to use another maybe a cheaper agent maybe a smaller agent maybe we want to run it on your own computer as well on your local system then we can go in and set up a reasoning agent with Agno so the only difference here is basically just that we use a GPT 4.0 this could be any this could be the mini version this could be any model out there that doesn't support reasoning then we can set reasoning equal to true in here which is going to use an additional AI agent that breaks it down into task and we have pretty much just chain of thought still, at least internally, so we can build this wrapper around it kinder. Now we're just going to solve it in the exact same way. We print the response, we set streaming equal to true again. So now it's going to use this GPT-4.0 model. Let's see how it solves it. Just rerun the program. Should be very similar results that we're getting, but this is a non-thinking model. So now we can see it's in thinking mode, trying to solve the problem. The model has not been trained on this, but we should be able to get very similar results when we are like solving very hard problems, coding problems, just something that we really need to think about before we go in and, and actually like comes up with a decision. So I even think that this diagram here is better. So we have track A, we have track with one person, track, track with five people here. We don't really have the lever, but you can see here a trolley on the track headed toward five people. You can pull a lever to divert it into another track where only one person is tied up. So I even think that this output here is probably even better. It's not as detailed, but it still breaks it down. We can see the decision on whether to pull the lever on Charlie Pedro, uh, uh, depending on the ethical framework applied. Each framework offers distinct perspective, emphasizing outcomes, moral rules, or character. So it pretty much comes up with the same conclusion, breaks it down, it understands the problem, and this is the difference between the agent mode with Agno, and also if you don't have the agent mode or reasoning mode with large language models out of the box but reasoning is very important break down task reason understand the task that you're trying to solve because if you don't take this into account the ai agent or the lm is not an agent then then it basically just tries to just spit something out and just take the most probable words take the task solve it as fast as possible we wouldn't really do that as, as humans these ai agents they work way more like humans we get we get a problem we think about the problem, it's so important to think about the problem and then solve it after when we have a good solution. 
most projects, most people and so on, if you just take a task as well, try to solve it as fast as possible without thinking, you're not going to come out with the best outcome compared to if you actually like, thought about it. And sometimes it's easy, even faster and much better solution just thinking about it a bit before then solve it. This is how we build AI systems and build reasoning into them as well, which is very important. If we combine this with memory, we combine it with tools and all that, we're starting to build a full tool set where we can connect everything, start to automate automated workflows, have reasoning where the agents can take actions by themselves.